Amplified um, Amplified Version of the Bible for 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 Amplified Version of the Bible Strongholds Strongholds Let's find out what strongholds are Do you have Amplified? You don't have Amplified Okay, just give me any other version Let's use the versions that you have Anybody with Amplified in the congregation? Amplified Bible Okay Pastor Shamange has Amplified Bible Can you read to our hearing? Verse 4, verse four. Amplified version said in verse 4 It says um, For For the weapons of our warfare Are not physical weapons of flesh and blood But they are mighty before God For the overthrow and destruction of strongholds and now he says, weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Aye. Huh? Yes, any other translation? There's one translation that defines strongholds into thoughts, concepts, ideas. Which one is that translation? Huh? Thoughts, concepts, and ideas. Strongholds, in this case, is not your village in Jatoka. Strongholds is not talking about territorial places. It's talking about concepts that you have accepted that are not in line with the word of God. Oh, you have not met people that you confronted with scriptures and they have a defense for, for scriptures. That thing that is there, that is exalted above scripture. In the ideology of that personality is a stronghold you will not go far with God if you have those concepts because those concepts will become shelters for lying spirits deceiving spirits many of you are still very traditional in your outlook and make me um, the day they celebrate a leku in your village People are supposed to still do one thing or the other. And you are still, you are a Christian and you are still doing it. It's not because you don't know that you are a Christian. It's because that thing has constituted a stronghold. A stronghold seems to um, establish authority. There's an illegitimate authority that is established in a particular concept that makes it look superior to the perspective of the word of God. If you are still such a man, you have a limitation. There's a level to which you can go and demons will suppress you. And if there's something in your life like that, like there are several people, I've met some Christians that, okay, all right, let's go, let's go this way. Ah, no, 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 we can't go that way. I've met some Christians. Yeah, you, know, you see, I need to sample something so that I know what to say in public and what we can say in private. There are several Christians that believe that you can sample a woman you want to marry and to check her fertility whether she's capable of hallelujah so that's a, it's a stronghold in fact it's, it's a, yeah it's a concept it's a concept and in abuja they were doing a what do they call it a youth conference and um, the facilitator was talking about fidelity not Premarital sex is a sin. The young. Uh, okay. What? And the, the argument was so strong that the meeting did not end with any conclusion. This is a church meeting, not in a club. They say, no, what kind? What I don't know. You mean, how will you know that? It's a stronghold. So if such a person gets married, what will stop him from sampling other women to see? Are there varieties? Are there possibilities? Are there variables that I'm not aware of? Because if the word of God is not an authority in your life, you are a free thinker. And the free thinker has accommodation for every form of ideology. If you don't sustain a biblical worldview, you are you are like uh, an isotope an isotope without shape and form 
<laughs> Hallelujah. So the Bible says that we need to cast, pull down stronghold. Whenever you are confronted with the word of God and the word of God seems to challenge your psychological position, your philosophical position, that position, you must, after that Bible study, you must go home and pull down that stronghold. You must not retain that position in your philosophy anymore because that is going to be a hideout for a deceiving spirit. A deceiving spirit will come on that basis and begin to minister to you. Exactly. Secondly, the Bible says we need to cast down imaginations. Imaginations. Most of the people you call homosexual and gay today is began with imaginations. The living spirit was able to bring them, were able to bring them to a point where they felt that that was how they were. Through imaginations, pornography, all of that, a lot of people feel that they were created with an attraction for the opposite sex. And a lot of that is in bigger cities like Abuja, Lagos, Kano, there's, it's, it's, it's on the rise. And all of these things are being fed by deceiving spirits. And the Bible says that we need to pull down, we need to cast down imaginations. Have you ever, ever been molested by unclean spirits in your mind? You see pictures. You see pictures. You see pictures. It means that uh, these unclean spirits have access to your imagination and if that happens to you it's a major emergency because it's the same portal that divine visions come from hmm? so you need to go for purging you need to admit yourself in the hospital of the intensive care of God's grace so that you can sanitize the membrane of your imagination because that's where visions will come that's where prophetic realities will come and for those of us that we have seen how god has delivered us because of visions because of revelations because of insight and you know how important it is for you to be accurate you will not allow that pollution to go on the bible says that we need to cast down this warfare first is of the mind this is the mind warfare you cast down strongholds concept you cast down imaginations you cast down high things ideologies for instance we went to the biology class and they began to teach us the theory of evolution i knew we were, we were studying lies because the scriptures have uh, have taken over the high places of my mind but there are several people that the high places of their mind are still under the influence of the science class then this other man this demonic man now comes up with uh, this genetic man what's his name darwin now say okay our ancestors were were monkeys then he shows you a progression if we came from monkeys why are they still monkeys the last of them would have evolved and there'll be no monkey left and all kinds of you know you are sudden lies at least it, at least let the, let your children know that they are studying lies. This is how the world claims to see it. But we have our own worldview. We can study this one and write exams for them and pass their exams. But we know where we stand. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because you need the high places of your life to be ruled by the authority of the word of God. And that becomes your eye view. That's how you look at the world. You look at the world from the testimony of Jesus. Then in any sphere you find yourself, you can become a witness. If you find yourself in a political sphere and all the high places of your mind have been conquered by the word of God, you can become a true witness. That's the first level of warfare. First layer of warfare. Let's go to the second layer of warfare. Back to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Second layer. All right, let's begin from verse 11. You know, we said uh, before we started the conference, the Bible studies that we did, for which I um, advise every one of us 
to get the messages of the Bible study, the pre-conference Bible study. We started the lecture from that point and uh, we see that the revelatory downloads that Paul gave about warfare, first of all, were designed to ensure survivor having done all to what? Stand. So Paul wants to ensure that we have the capacity to survive the war before he teaches us how to fight the war. You get that? It is in view of this survival survival policy that he gives us a few recommendations. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, it's, it's a survival protocol. It's a survival protocol. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. He said, you see, this thing it, it, it has gone into the supernatural scope. It's not natural. If it's WWF, is that what they call it? World WW what? Is E now? Mm. God will help us. Hallelujah. We are still trying to. Uh, you know, it's been long since we, we looked at those things. But you, you call it WWE now. What's the E for? Okay. World Wrestling. Oh, when we were small, it was WWF, World Wrestling Federation. It means you guys just came around. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said we wrestle. But it's not WWF or WWE. It's something beyond that scope. It's not flesh and blood. So those days there used to be a move called hammer lock. Hammer lock. You may know all the locks in wrestling. It doesn't make you more effective in this battle because it's not natural. It's what? Supernatural. Now, I'd like us to follow the protocol. There is a range here. There are a range of demonic functionaries that the Bible wants us to be educated about. The first mention here is called the principality. The word principality is a compound word. It is a combination of prince and pality. Prince and what? How many of you know what a pality is? You don't read old books. 1316. 1817 books. Hey, that's where you will see raw English. Foundational English. If, if you want me to watch secular film, the one I will watch is those ancient films that they carry sword. Eh? That's I learn English. I learn, I learn English from there. That's, that's where I learn English. English that have punch and power. English that are masculine. Oh, Jesus. I did it deliberately for more than 15 years now. I chose my words from there. Words that have punch and power. Punch, male words. That's what I'm saying. Male. Not, not weak words that, are, that can't communicate, can't convey. So, that's my kind of thing. To learn English. Those are my teachers. Ancient English. There are some things with principality. We don't use these words anymore. But in ancient English, you will find all of this. In 1617, when you read those ancient novels, those ones with brown, brown paper. So, polity means territory. You know what a prince means? A warden. Someone unto whom a territory has been committed. The warden of a territory. Ah, you must, how many of you watch Game of Thrones here? The warden of the north. That's a principality. He has the authority over the knot. So there are two things there that forms a principality. The warden and the territory. You get it? You know Jesus called he said now is the judgment of this world. You see remember? John chapter 12 verse 31. Now the prince of this world is cut out. The prince of this world is what? Cast out from his polity. He was what? A principality but he has been relieved of his polity. So he's now prince. You are not following me. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world is cast out. Next verse. And if. If I. Wow. Now this is a kingdom statement. But. Do you realize. 
this kingdom statement is standing on if and what if I be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me what does he mean by that Jesus is saying I am not supposed to lift myself up that's not my business I'm praying somebody does that. I'm praying somebody remembers to do that. If by any means I am lifted up, my being lifted up will be the price that needs to be paid for the government of God that is already situated in heaven to become functional upon the face of the earth. And in that act, the prince, the principality of this world will become the prince of this world because he will be relieved of what? Of his territory. Guess who lifted him up? It was Satan. It was Satan. Because Paul says, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have what? Crucified, not killed. Crucified. Lifted him up. Because the circuit will be complete by a lifting. And he was not supposed to lift himself. And it was the wisdom of God was, that was at work. The devil did not know the secret. And the devil now lent himself as the personality to help complete the circuit. Should I say something? Your calling, your ordination, your anointing was crafted with a very secret kind of wisdom. Such that if you are in tune with God, every attack of the devil has facilitated the agenda of God for your life. Are you somebody that has been under attacks, under attacks and you have been weeping? Weep no more. Even where you are now, it took some attacks to push you there. You did not even see it coming. It was, it was as a result of attacks. Several doors were open. Just stay in tune with God, that's all. So, you see, principality. The devil is a territorial entity. Most of the altars we have, eh? Aleku altar, which is with Akban, the altar of Akban. These altars are territorial because Satan is what territorial. But we want to do church and church, we want church not to be territorial because all the camps, the Christian camps that we have, most of them are in Ogun State, and the governor is a Muslim. The structures, administrative structures over the state, is Islamic. So our own is to come and hold service. We don't know the kind of ministry that affects territory. Meanwhile, the Ezemo is a territorial personality. The Ezemo will be consulted if the river becomes bitter. If it dries up, Ezemo goes there and begins to sacrifice to appease the gods so that the river can be restored. His priesthood is territorial. But the pastor believes that his priesthood is behind the pulpit. Meanwhile, Jesus in the days of his flesh did not have pulpit. That one is food for thought. Think about it. For think about. Don't allow it pass like that. Think about it. You are pre preparing yourself for pulpit. Meanwhile, pulpit is not ministry. Any don't look for pulpits. Look for people. When they, where there are people, there is ministry. It doesn't mean that where there is pulpit, there is a pulpit. There is ministry. In the days of his flesh, he had what? No pulpit. What we call the ministry of Jesus were the, thing, the escalations that took place in the market. In various uh, ceremonies. Then Jesus will now come. They are already singing the song. Take us as we are to, for, for burial. Take us as we are. I only plead Christ died for me. Take us as we are. Then Jesus now come. As they are singing and moving to the graveside, he touches the, the, the uh, coffin. Ke, 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 ke. And then the relevance of that song ends. <laughs> and then he begins a three days teaching. Hey, I like Jesus. I like him. I like him. Hallelujah. The day they now hailed him as the great prophet of Nazareth, he escaped. The day you expect him to come out and say, Yes, I've come. When they are already panting for him, a crowd gathered in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, expecting Jesus to say, Hallelujah! 
and then crusade would have started he climbed mountain <laughs> oh god have mercy we are still learning his ways learning to have the kind of heart he had are you still with me all right all right all right all right let me see if we can if we can round up it's obvious we need another contact to do justice to this matter so that's what principality means a principality who knows the difference between a prince and a king yes yes a prince is a king without a throne he doesn't have a polity he has authority but there is no territory to exercise it so we have principality should I go on? Alright. If at any point in time